Welcome to Worldwide Kingdom Ministry, where we only teach the kingdom. And remember, God loves you. Greetings, my brothers and my sisters, young men and young women, even my elders. How you all doing today? I'm coming before you today, not with something new, but with something old. And it's all concerning what Jesus both did and taught. And it's, it's been this secret that's been hid in plain view. And it's all pertaining to the kingdom. Because when I come before you all, I want you all to remember that it's all about the kingdom. And before we go any further, we're going to read the scripture and then we're going to pray. Amen. And the scripture is we're going to come out of Hebrews chapter 11 because that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about faith. That's what the Lord put in my spirit. Amen. And we're going to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. God got a word for you today. In the past, we haven't spoke on it, but today the door is, God is opening the door for your salvation. God is opening the door for if you have backslid or if you have needed to rededicate your life to the Lord or if you just want to be saved today. You want to let the invite the Holy Spirit in, and that's what the day is all about. The Lord told me, "Say, son, I want to save my people. God want to save you. God want to deliver you." And today, that door is open. Jesus said, "If I stand at the door and knock, only thing you need to do today is just open your heart and remember what I told you before. Your heart is your mind. Now we're gonna pray." And y'all remember now, this ain't about me. This is about us. And one thing about it, I, like I told y'all before, that God allowed me when I was laying in my room and I was down on the floor. And God showed me all of you all in the spirit realm. And even now when I go and, and, and go before the Lord and I'm praying and I'm saying, Father, just help him, Lord. So remember that. We're going to hold hands in hand. Remember now, I want you to get involved. I want you to I want you to pray for the thing that you standing in need of. I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for those in need that standing in a prayer for need. I want you to, let's come in agreement. The Bible said where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst. And the Bible also declares that if two touch and agree on anything, so today we touching and agreeing that the kingdom of heaven will have its way. We touching and agreeing that every prayer request that you have sent up before God, that he would take heed to it and answer it today. Now I need you to get involved. Now as we go before the throne right now, I want you to clear your heart and your mind to receive what God is trying to give to you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clear your mind and your spirit and let's hold hand in hand and let's go before the throne of grace right now. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. And before we go any further, Lord, I just bring your children before you right now, Lord, asking you, Lord, to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us of any sin or transgression we committed against your will, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Forgive us of any fault that we have had with one another, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. You put in my spirit, Lord. You told me to pray for your children, Lord. And I'm praying for them right now, Lord. And I'm asking you, Lord, to remove the scales off of their eyes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Take the plugs out of their ears, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let them hear what you said. Let them hear your decree. Let them hear your word, Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus. We 
want to give you the praise. We want to give you the glory. We want to give you the honor that's due unto your name, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Some standing in need of healing right now, Jesus. Touch their body, Jesus. Let your blood, Jesus. Let your blood, Jesus. Let it run through their veins right now, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Some lost loved ones, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Some lost jobs, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Meet their needs right now, Lord. Yes, Jesus. I'm bringing them before you, Lord. We standing at your throne, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every stronghold that's binding them up, that's binding their minds, every confusing spirit, every spirit that's trying to come contrary to your word, I bind it right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, you said, Lord, you give us the keys, Lord, to loose and to lock, Lord. I want to lock those spirits, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, lock them up, Lord. Lock them up, Jesus. Lock them up, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Touch them right now, Lord. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You worthy, Jesus. You worthy of the praise. You worthy of the glory. You worthy of the honor, Lord. Let the kingdom of heaven, Jesus, let the kingdom of heaven, Lord, have its way right now, Lord. Touch him right now, Jesus. Touch him right now, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Let him know, Lord, you are Alpha. You are Omega. You are the beginning. You are the end. Jesus, Jesus, do it right now, Lord. Do it right now, Jesus. Do it right now, Jesus. I just thank you for him right now, Lord. I thank you for him right now, Lord. As I bring him before you right now, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that the word that come forth today, Lord, that it fall on good ground, Lord, in each and every one of their lives, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Save them right now, Lord. Deliver them right now, Lord. You know what they standing in need of, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I want to pray for the ministers right now. That's ministering your word, Lord. Touch them right now, Jesus. Touch them right now, Jesus. Let them pray for your word, Lord. Let them not pray for no other word, Lord. Only what you said, Jesus. Touch them right now, Lord. Forgive us right now, Lord, of any shortcoming, Lord. Forgive us of any trespass, Lord, that we trespass against you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn right now, Jesus. Purge us right now, Jesus. Wash us right now, Jesus. Wash us with your blood. Wash us with your word. Wash us, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Let your hiss up, Lord. Clean us, Lord. Clean us up, Lord. Prepare for you, Lord. If it be anything, Lord, that's in us, Jesus. That's not like you, Lord. Take it out of us right now, Lord. Help us to be vessels of honor, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You worthy, Jesus. You worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit, Lord, lead, guide, and direct us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit teach us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit convict us, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. You are the light of the world, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Let that light shine. Let that light shine. Let it shine through us, Lord. Use us, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you for everything you're doing in their lives. I want to thank you for blessing them, Lord. I want to thank you for giving them favor, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I thank you for them right now, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I thank you for working with them, Lord. I thank you for being patient with them, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Watch over them, Lord. Keep them, Jesus. Keep their heart. Keep their mind, Lord. Govern them, Lord. With your word, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit, Lord, take over this service, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit, Lord, just rest, rule, and abide in us, Lord. You said that we lean not on our own understanding, but acknowledge you in all our ways. You shall direct our path, Lord. Direct their paths right now, Lord. Direct them into their greatness, Lord. Direct them into their destiny, Lord. Direct them, Lord, into the victory, Lord. Yes, Lord. Direct them into the dominion, the dominion that you gave them. Let us know how to use the power, the power that you gave us, Lord. In the Holy Spirit, Lord. In the Holy Ghost, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I come before you for all those with special prayer needs, Lord. They have been telling me that they need me to pray for them for certain stuff, Lord. I ask you to meet those needs right now, Lord. I thank you for it, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Let this word that come forth, Lord, touch me first, Lord, and touch them, Lord. Oh, let it be a healing to our soul, Lord. Let it be a soothing, Lord. To our mind, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just want to be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due unto your name, Lord. Help us to understand who you are, Lord. Help us not to want to be led astray, Lord, but help us to understand your power, your resurrected power, Lord, who you are, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Now, as I decrease, Lord, let the Holy Spirit increase, Lord. You teach us, Lord, what you want us to learn, Lord. Let your people know, Lord, that it's you that's speaking to them and not me, Lord. And we just want to give you the praise, glory, and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God is truly up to something in your life and mine. And don't you know that I've been telling you all how God is bringing favor. Because God had told me, he said, son, I want you to speak favor over their life. And I truly know that God has given you favor. And I know that your circumstances and your situations are being worked out. And I know that if you hold on and you just continue to listen to the podcast and continue to be obedient to the word of God. When we first started off, we started off with the mind. Because nothing ain't going to change until you change your mind, the way you think. Don't you know that what you think about all day long is what you will become? So what are you thinking about all day long? Because that's what you're going to become. God wants you to be encouraged today. God wants you to understand that he have a plan for your life. God wants you to understand that you were sent here for a reason. And the reason that God sent you here was to be a vessel of honor. The reason God sent you here was for you to be encouraged. The reason that God sent you here was for you to be a kingdom of heaven citizen, an ambassador for the Lord, delivering a message Delivering yourself. Amen. The Bible says, present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You to present yourself unto the kingdom of heaven that God will use you as he uses me. And I don't want to be long today because I don't want to bore y'all with the word, but I hope that you all are receiving something from what God is bringing to you. I hope that you're sharing these messages. I hope that this, that where God is taking me, that you gravitate to it and let God take you because I truly know that God is taking me somewhere. And I truly know that if you take heed and be obedient, you going somewhere too. And I also believe that from the messages that you've been listening to and what God has been applying unto you, that your life is being changed. And today, you're in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. God allowed you to be where you are right now for you to receive this word. And this word is directly for you. Amen. All righty. So we're going to get into this here word. 
Amen. All right. God want to allow me to pray that spirit of slumber off of you. I was, I was studying in my Bible and, you know, there's a spirit of slumber which will allow you not to hear what God is trying to tell you and to see what God is showing you. And the Lord told me, he said, son, I want you to pray that off of my people. And I'm denouncing that spirit of slumber off of your life right now that when the word come forth, that you will hear the word, that you will gravitate and see what God is trying to tell you. And that no devil ain't going to be able to block you and stop you no more. And God wants you to understand that he has given you power. He has given you domain. For us, in the Bible it say that I gave you dominion over everything, over the fish, over the fowl of the air, over every living, creeping thing. And God have even gave you victory over the enemy. You got to learn how to speak better. We all do. Amen. God is doing something great in our lives. God has made salvation possible for us all through the kingdom message. Amen. God is great. God is definitely great. I just want to read. I'm just going to go off a little bit. It's something that I want to read. And it's uh, Psalms 103. And I, and I was reading that psalm because it's like we have failed to understand the power of God. We have deviated from who God really is. It's like we getting a, a cut version of who God is, a watered down, and God don't want you to have that. God wants you to understand that he is a God of all power. He is a God of everything. And we're going to read it. It's uh, Psalms 103. Y'all write this stuff down because when I come before you, it's not with my word, but it's with God's word. And this here is off from where we're going, but I just had to read this to let you know the type of God that we serve. See, I don't know who a lot of people serve, but I serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I serve the God that created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And this is the type of God that we serve. Amen. Now, David wrote this. I'm sorry, Psalms 104. So y'all write that down. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. God is very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. God is clothed with power. Just, just listen to what the Bible is saying to you who God is. You are clothed with honor and majesty who cover yourself with light as with a garment. God cover himself with light as a garment. Come on now. We're talking about an awesome and a powerful God. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that I'm bringing forth to you. The God of heaven and earth. Gravitate to it. Get God in your life. Amen. Who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. God stretched the heavens out like a curtain. He lays the beam of his upper chamber in the waters. Who makes the clouds his chariot. God ride on the clouds. Who walks on the wings of the wind. Who makes his angels spirits. His ministers a flame of fire. And I'm bringing fire to you today. The fire of the uncut true word of God. For you to understand that there's nothing too hard for the God that we serve. Your situation, your circumstance, whatever you're going through. God is able to bring you out. I want you to understand that the God that you serve is the God that want to work out an impossible situation in your life. Let him do it. Amen. Y'all get on fire for the Lord. Y'all let what God put on me come on you. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost take over your life. Let the excitement and the joy of the Lord fulfill in your life. Get on fire for God. Let the Spirit of God just move in your life. Amen. 
You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. Amen. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. They went up over the mountains. They went down into the valleys, to the place which you found for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. He sends the springs into the valleys which flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them the birds of the heavens have their habitation. They sing among the branches. What a mighty and awesome God we serve. I'm not going to read all of it, but I want you, I want you to get in there. I want you to get hungry for the word of God. Get thirsty for righteousness. Get, get, just want to desire everything that God has in store for you. God has a lot in store for you. You got to want to get it for yourself. I always am excited about what God doing. There's so much. God, I just wanted to read that to you because God wants you to know who he is. God wants you to know that he's not a myth. God wants you to know that he's not a fairy tale. God wants you to know that he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He wants you to know the power that he possesses. Praise God. I'm going to get into this here because I got excited about that, which I love being excited about God. God has always had a plan. We just have to line up with it. Don't you know God has always had a plan for your life? You got to line up with it. And I'm going to let you know right now, because I'm first partaker, God have been blessing me. And I know that the, the same word that I come forth to you with, that God is blessing you. I know that things are looking better for you. I know that your finances are getting better. And God had put in my spirit this week and he said, son, I want you to let my people know that we are not a people that are happy with where we are. So we're not going to never be happy right where we are. We're going to be a people that always want to do better. We're going to be a people that always want to get a higher learning. That always want to know more. So guess what? God said, let them know that I want them to educate themselves. I want them to sharpen their tools. In other words, whatever you doing, whatever you desire to do, you can do it. Just like me. I'm going I'm to go back to school again. I want to do home improvement. So I'm going to go to school to learn more about that. And God say, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to understand in your mind that there's nothing that you can't do. And I'm here to encourage you and to let you know that you can be all you can be because you got a father that's standing behind you to encourage you and to let you know that he got you. So don't settle for anything. Don't settle for less. But understand that everything take hard work. Nothing ain't going to just rain out of the sky and fall in your lap. Anything you want, you got to put work in. Amen. But it will work out. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to get into the message. And the message for the day is, what type of faith do you have? Amen. And that's the question that God set before you today. What type of faith do you have? And we're going to go over some different types of faith because there are many different types of faith, but there's one that God wants you to have. Amen. All right. As we get into the word, are you ready to walk in power? The power of your father put the power your father put inside of you is through your faith. Don't you know everything that pertaining to you it all have to do with your faith. Because if you could believe it. See, faith is something that you see. You have to see it before you get it. And that's what faith is all about. That's why 
Jesus had told the centurion man, he told the children of Israel, he said, I didn't see great faith like that in none in Israel because the centurion man understood authority. And that's the thing that we have to understand. We have to understand authority because it's through authority that you accomplish anything. The centurion man, he was like a lieutenant in the army. And he said, Lord, you don't even have to come to my house because I understand authority. Because if I tell one of my guys to go, I know he going to go because I have that authority. And he said, all you got to do is just speak the word because I understand authority and I know it'll be done. And that's how we got to get we got to get to the point with our faith where we understand that Jesus said, by your, by his stripes, you heal. So you got to understand that the authority that been spoken over your life, if you receive it and believe it, it's yours. And we got to walk in that type of authority, knowing that everything that Christ said in the word, that we can have it. Amen. Praise God. I just want to thank God because, you know, Every time I come on here, God put this word in me. So it's for me and for you. So I know it's not a miss. It's a hit. And God told me, he said, son, I want you to let them know that. Hold up. Let me let, just explain a little bit. Every time when I come on here, it is just like when I open. It's pertaining to kingdom. And it's pertaining to kingdom because one thing about it is, we serve a higher government. Our government have higher standards. That's why the kingdom of heaven message is about a government, not about religion. It's about a government. It's about the government, the governmental system of heaven. Because if you understand, and I'm going to tell you, heaven government was here before earth. God, do you think heaven was unorganized? No. God always had a governing system and it started in heaven. And that's why in the Lord's prayer, it say, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. The kingdom, the kingdom that God already had established, which was his governmental system, which was already established in heaven. He said, thy will be done, where? The same governmental system that God was talking about is his will. And he said, let that will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, that's why we are not to be preaching about no religion. We to be preaching about a governmental system. And, and that's where I have a problem because religion takes God out of government. And how you going to take God out of anything when God is in control over everything? And that's why I want you to understand the message that I'm coming on here to you with. So you can understand the government that you serve. You can understand that you are of a higher standard. Your government gives you higher standards. It, it don't bend and break. It don't, it don't uh, just say that everything is okay when it's not okay. That's not what Jesus did. That's why people didn't like Jesus because when Jesus came, he came and told them that all the pagan stuff that y'all are doing and all these uh, traditional things that y'all are doing is not of the Father. And that's why when you begin to speak the truth, people don't want to hear it because it's contradicting what they've been brought up with all their lives, all the traditions and all the uh, pagan uh, holidays that they believe in that they don't want to break. And we're going to get into those stuff at a later time because that's a whole nother message. But I just wanted you to understand what the kingdom of heaven is all about. And Jesus also said when one of uh, uh, the scribes and Pharisees, they asked him, they say, well, when will we know about this kingdom of heaven? And Jesus told him, he said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is the spirit of God. Amen. That's why God wants you to get hungry. I could just, I, it's so much that God has put inside of me, but it's off from what God is telling me to do right now. But we're going to get into it. And I want you all just to stay tuned because there's so much that we have to uh, do 
You know, our time here on earth is short and we have no time to waste. So let's make use of our time. And we're going we're going we're going to grow and go together because I need you all just like y'all need me. We are a family. We are the body of Christ. Instead of all these different denominations, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, why we can't just be called the body of Christ instead of all that? Because that's who we are. An arm can't say, I don't need the body because you're going to be handicapped. But let me get back into this word here. And I hope that you all are excited like I am about yourself. Hallelujah. It's through faith, your faith. Let's study a little bit. Your, your father wants you to be the best you you can be. And it's going to take for you and I to work the work we were sent here to do. God sent you here to do a work. Our father has to reprogram us with the kingdom of heaven ways so that we can fulfill the will of our father. So we must take our will and make it our father's will. See, we got to be reprogrammed. We've been taught so many traditional ways and stuff. Believe me, when you go to stepping on people's feet about stuff they've been doing for a long time, they don't like that. But I came to the understanding and discovered that a lot of stuff that we traditionally picked up and religiously picked up was taught wrong. It's a lot of stuff that we've been taught and live wrong that we have to be reprogrammed. How are we going to be reprogrammed? We're going to be reprogrammed through the spirit of the Lord and through the washing of the word. The more you get the word in you, the more your faith will be built up. The Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you got a little bit of faith right now, don't worry. God going to make that a lot of faith by you being obedient to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So get your pen and your paper and let's go over a few scriptures before we get into the word. Some principle. God is releasing a hunger and a thirst. Amen. God releasing a hunger and a thirst over your life. For his word over your life. Hallelujah. And before we go any further, I'd like to say, I owe you all. And, and I was laying in my room, and the Lord had told me, he, he gave me such a burden for you all that I owe you everything. So when I'm studying and I'm, I'm doing what God wants me to do, it's because all of that I owe you. I owe it all to you because God sent me here with all that inside of me and he sent you here with so much inside of you and you should want to sharpen it up and you should want to be the best you. You should want to be the best you that you could be. You should be a person that whatever obstacles come your way, they won't stop you. Whatever devil that's trying to defeat you, you won't let it work. You got to learn how to rebuke that devil. You got to learn how to stand tall. You got to learn how to understand that God got you. And that's what keep me going because I trust in the Lord. And I know that God going to make a way. And God have never failed. The Bible say, see, because what I do is I stand on the scripture. And in the scripture it say, never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. So when things get tough and hard on me, I say, Lord, you said, never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. And whatever the word of God said, and that's why it's so important for you to study the Bible, because like I told you before, the Bible is a law book. The, and our father is the judge. So if you go before a, a, a manly court and you tell the judge, I want to be my own lawyer. I want to represent my own case. But you don't know no law. Get what the judge said. You got a fool for a lawyer. Because you don't know nothing about law. But when you go before the judge, God, that's why he wants you to study the Bible. He wants you to understand the word so you can apply the word that he said to your life. So when you go before him, it's not you going before him as if you don't know what you're talking about. You going before him 
with his own word and he have to honor his word. Hallelujah. God is just having his way today. I can have my plan, but they say that when you make plans, God laughs. Amen. The Bible said that actually. I believe it too. So get your pen and your paper and let's go over a few scriptures before we get into the word. Some principles. God is releasing a hunger and a thirst for his word over your life. Hallelujah. Before we go any further, I like to say I owe you all. I have a heavy burden for you all. Let's get fed God's word. We're going to talk about faith and the kind of faith God wants us to have. Amen. These are some type of faiths. Number one, number one is dead faith. Dead faith is in the book of James, you could go there if you want to, James chapter 2, verse 17. You just write it down because I'm going to go through these quick before we get into what God truly wants us to have. So just write that down, James chapter 2, verse 17. James informs us that faith without works is what? Dead. Amen. That's a dead faith. When you got faith, but you don't put no work in with that faith, that's a dead faith. Amen. Not my word, God word. Number two, natural faith. Don't you know there is a natural faith? It's a natural faith. You believe if you sit in a chair, that that chair will be able to hold you up. That's what you call natural faith. You believe that if I sit down, this chair gonna hold me up, amen? That's one example of a natural faith. Number three, faithless faith. Faithless faith is a, is if, is a if faith. If you bless me, I'll do it. If you deliver me, I'll do it. If you heal me, I'll do it. That's an if faith. God don't want you to have an if faith. You must see it to believe it. That's that type of faith. If you see it, you'll believe it. That's not a good faith. That's a faithless faith. Amen. Uh, receive it to believe it. Uh, that's That type of faith is like Thomas. Thomas, uh, if you can read it, go to John. You don't have to go there now. But write it down, John chapter 20, verse 17, verse 27, I'm sorry. He said he would not believe unless he put his hands in, uh, put his finger in Jesus' hand and put his finger in Jesus' side. That's the only way he would believe. That's the type of faith that God don't want you to have. That's a faithless faith. Amen. And number four. Uh, write this scripture down, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, is uh, God has given you a measure of faith. God has given all of us a measure of faith. Every last one of us is born with a measure of faith that God has put inside of you. You have the power to make it grow. Amen? That measure of faith that God has given you, you possess the power to make that measure of faith grow. Hallelujah. Number five, write this scripture down, Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Uh, this is a have faith in God. Have faith in God. That's a type of faith, to have faith in God. You got to have a determined faith. We, we got to have a faith in the kingdom of heaven message. You got to have faith. That the message of God, if you study, like I told you, and I told you all before, if you read Matthew chapter 13, just read all of it, you will see that. And if you even study your Bible, even in the Old Testament, the, the one message that God always had was always about him as king. And if he's a king, if you're a king, you have to have a kingdom. So God has always been king over a kingdom. And that kingdom is heaven and earth. Why would we not have God as king over earth? Amen. Uh, God wants you to have a pure mustard seed faith. Don't you know uh, little is much 
when you have God in it. A mustard seed faith, a mustard seed is a very small seed, but if you have a mustard seed faith, which is a pure faith, mixed with God, you got a lot. Amen. You plus God equals the majority. Amen. Remember that. Alrighty. And I want you to write this scripture down. Luke chapter 5 verse 20. This is a visible faith. Where our Lord sees your faith. See God. God sees your faith when you moving and you acting on his word. When you doing those things that he told you to do. That's called a seen faith. If, I, if you say you trust in the Lord, a person could see the faith that you have in you. Amen? That's a seeing faith. You do and you say. And last of all, there is a though faith. That's the faith God wants you to have. A though faith. So let's go into the word before we close. And I know I didn't say what the though faith is. But when we get into the word, you will see what the dope faith is. And I'm going to go through here and get you all to doing whatever you're doing. So please write this stuff down. Pay attention to what God is saying unto you. The Bible says, he who have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying unto him. So let that ear that God unclog because we already rebuked that spirit of deafening you to God's word. And if you study uh, the sword of seed, the devil always want to steal the word concerning the kingdom because he don't want you to understand the power that you possess. He don't want you to understand your identity and your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. But God have made a way for you to understand. God have made a way for you to understand that you are a citizen. You are an ambassador for Christ. So if you are an ambassador for Christ, that means you got work to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go into the book of Daniel, chapter 3. We're getting ready to close. Amen. I hope the Holy Ghost has your attention. God want to show you faith. Amen. So let's go to Daniel. Chapter 3. Y'all ready? Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. Y'all pay attention now. Whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent together together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Do you see that's going on? That's just like if I was to break this down into the society that we live in today, it would be all the materialistic things that we think about and all the cares and concerns of those things of the world of the world which we have made to become our idols to bow down whether you believe it or not when you put anything before god you may as well have bowed down to it because it has become your god but god has sent a word to you today to deliver you from every bondage from every attack of the enemy, from every idol that have been trying to control you. Because the Bible says, what shall a man profit if he gain the whole world but lose his soul? God want to deliver you from that spirit, from that spirit of idolatry, from that spirit of the worldliness. Don't you know that in the Bible it say the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They are not of the Father, but they are of the world. Do not walk in those things. God is delivering you today. God is bringing salvation to you. And all those that are out there that's been uh, supporting me and that's been watching these video, please take heed to what God is doing in your life and what God is saying through the word of God. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image 
that Nebuchadnezzar the king set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, then, and Herod cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and language, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbut, pastry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. God has sent deliverance to your house today. He do not want you bowing down and worshiping nothing. Now this is what faith is. God is showing you the type of faith that he wants you to have. Pay attention. Let your ears hear. Let your eyes see what God is trying to tell you. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Don't you know that it's a lot of people don't want you to be delivered. It's a lot of people don't want you to walk in the anointing that God has put in your life. It's a lot of people that don't want you to hear the truth and get the truth and walk in the truth and speak the truth because they don't want that. They, they want to settle for mediocrity. They want to settle for a uh, watered down version. They want to settle for, uh, well, it's okay. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, if you go going to Disney World, and there's many exits before you get to Disney World, all of them good exits, but there's only one exit that's going to take you to the right exit. Can you just get off on any exit? Just because it's the right exit? So in other words, everything that sounds right don't mean it's good. Amen? I mean, in other words, I, I backed it up. Everything that sounds good don't mean it's right. Hallelujah. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the corn and flute, harp, sap, but pastry, and all kinds of music, all the people in, and all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. People want you to continue to worship idols. But God have called us out from that. God have called us to walk in faith. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, pastry, and dulcimer, and all kind of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whosoever falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, See, don't you know people are always watching you? See, these, these guys, they were over something. The devil always want to steal where God trying to take you. The devil always want to steal your greatness. But guess what? God sent me here today to let you know ain't no devil could steal the greatness. Ain't no devil could steal your destiny. Ain't no devil could steal your identity that he have given you. And God is sealing and stamping it today. Hallelujah. You just got to walk by this faith. Amen. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over fathers of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O oh king, have not regarded thee. That's how we gotta be. When people ain't saying, see, that's when our government steps in. See, that's the kingdom of heaven stepping in, saying we got a standard, we got rights, we got, we serve a higher government. You think I'm gonna serve you when I serve God, the creator of heaven and earth? And that's what they did. They made a stand. They say, I don't care who you is. You may be the king, but you're not my king. You might be a, a rule this nation, but you don't rule me. And that's the stand that we have to have. And that's the understanding that you have to have, knowing that you serve a higher government, knowing that the message of the kingdom of heaven is the truth, that 
Though all that religious stuff is just dividing. That's it. You got to understand and take and gravitate to what the word of God is saying to you today. They sir, O king, they have not regard thee. They serve not thy gods. See that? Nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We got to we got to have a standard. In other words, you got to be willing to die for what you believe in, and that's the question that's set at you today. Are you willing to die for what God has put over your life? Because that's how your faith is to be tried. Your faith is to be tried by if you truly believe what you believe, then you will die for it. Amen. And that's how I feel. That I believe that the faith that the kingdom of heaven. Word message that God has put in me, I'm willing to die for it because that's what I believe. I believe that my God, the creator of heaven and earth, his word, what he has spoken to me and over me is true. And I'm willing to die for that. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, see, the devil get mad when you stand for what God said. He was angry. To bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods? We're not going to serve no other god. And we got to make that stand. And we got to let people know that this is what we believe in. We, you, sometimes you got to go against the grain of the world. You might be, like I told you earlier, even though you standing alone, you never standing alone because you plus God equal the majority. And you got to remember that. Amen. Nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready that... At what time ye heard the sound of the corn and flute, harp, sackbox, pastry, and dulcimer, and all kind of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made? Well, but if worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? See what the devil going to try to tell you? If you don't do what he wants you to do, you think that God you serve will be able to deliver you out of my hand? You got to know and you got to believe that the God that you serve is able to deliver you from any snap, from any trap, from anything that the devil has set before you. You got to believe it. I hope and pray that this word that's coming before you today, that you gravitate to it, that you take charge over it, that you live it, and that you walk in it from this day forth. Because God wants you to. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. This got to be your answer. And said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful. In other words, they said, we are not worried about what you're talking about. And that's how we got to have that same attitude and that same spirit that when a man, when a governmental system, when a nation that's speaking against your nation, speaking against your kingdom, when they go against that, you got to be strong enough to tell them that no matter what you think and no matter what you say, I serve a God that's able. Listen. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. We ain't worrying about answering you because I'd rather be worrying about answering my father. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand you got to know that he able to deliver you out of any fiery trial that you may be going through right now whatever your situation is whatever your circumstance is don't listen to man don't listen to the other government you listen to what god told you. he said 
He able to deliver you out of anything that you in. Do you believe it? Where's your faith today? Amen. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, see that? That's that though faith. That's the faith God wants you to have. Though if you don't deliver me, Lord, even if you don't deliver me, Lord, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God nor worship the golden image. And that's that faith that I was telling you about, that I, that I told you I'll tell you later. And it is that though faith. Though I die for your name, say, Lord, I got a standard that you put in me. And I'm not going to bend that standard for the world or for nobody else. Though you slay me, I still serve you. Amen? Which thou has set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. See, the devil get mad when you have a standard, when you stand for something. You know, there's a saying, either fall for anything or stand for something. Which one will you be? And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was really mad. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. He was so mad, he heated it up even more. Make sure if they burn up. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See that? The men that tied them up and threw them in the Devil, the devil allowed them to get killed. And these, these, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then the same king, Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true old king. He answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. See that? No matter what fiery furnace you might be going through, getting ready to go through, guess what? Somebody with you. God is with you. You got to understand. You got to believe. You got to have a faith knowing that God ain't going to leave you. He said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. And that's why I say it's so important for you to understand the word because you recite that same word back to God. You said, Father, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm quite sure that those three guys said to God, Lord, we trust in you. Lord, your word got to come through this time. We trust in what you told us, Lord. So, Lord, we got our faith in you. We believe it in you. Now, Lord, no matter what they think they're going to do to us, Lord, show them who you is. And that's what God is saying to you. I want to show some people who I am. I want to show them in your life that I'll deliver you. I want to show them that I'll bring you out. Let God use you. Let God show some people who he is in your life today. Hallelujah. 
and you will not be disappointed. But we're going to go on because I know y'all ready to go. But I'm going to finish this up and we about done. Hallelujah. But I'm just hoping that God have delivered a word to you that you will embrace. Deliver the word to you that you will understand that you plus God equal the majority. Hallelujah. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high God. Do you see what he said? Now he was full of the devil. But he said, I see four men in there. And one of them looked like the son of God. He knew that the God that he had made couldn't even uh, come near to the almighty God, the most high God, the God, the God that I serve, the God that I bring before you every time I come on here, the God, the creator of heaven and earth, the God that wants you to serve, the God that wants you to obey, obey the voice that he's bringing to you today, the God that want to show you what faith is, the God that want to let you go through some trial, let you go through some test, but you got to come out without no burn. You got to go through the fire. Hallelujah. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. And that's what God saying to you today. I want some people to see what I've done in your life. See, they done counted you out. They done said you want a mountain and nothing. They done said that you will never make it. They done just threw the towel in on you. But God got you in his hand. God is holding you and God is telling you we can do it. God is telling you if you trust in me, I'll show you. God is telling you that if you can believe. God is saying your faith going to bring you through. You got to understand that you got to go through some stuff in order for God to show some people some stuff. Because God want to show them who he is in your life. Hallelujah. And the, and the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the king counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. See that? What you going through, it might look bad or it may look like it's hard for you. But get what? God is telling you, use this word. Let, let what you going through know that it don't have no power over you. Let them know whatever situation you in, you ain't got no power. God got me. He going to bring me through this. God going to deliver me. God going to give me what I need. God going to set me free. God going to let me come out of this and I ain't going to smell like smoke. God going to let me come out of this and my clothes ain't going to be burned. God going to let me come out of this and I'm going to be walking in newness. God going to let me come out of this and I'm going to show all my enemies. I'm going to show all my haters that God is true, that God is for real, that the kingdom of heaven message is what God is all about. Amen. Hallelujah. Nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. You go back over there and read it some more. I could, I could go on some more. Because God always got a word in me and it's even more on that word. But I just want you, I don't want to overdo it with you. I don't want to give you too much where you can't receive what God is trying to get to you. You just take that word, get hungry, get set on fire, get, uh, get the understanding to know who God is in your life. God wants you to understand that I am who I said that I am. I am the one that holds the keys to everything. I am the creator of heaven and earth. I am the king of kings and the lord of lords. I am the powerful one. I am the one that everyone must answer to. So don't be dismayed by stuff that you see. Don't be dismayed by following behind tradition and religion. But you follow behind the one and only true God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that created the heaven and the earth. The most high God. That's who you serve. And before I get ready to close, 
because I want y'all to go. I stopped at verse uh, 27. So if you want to keep reading on, which is more, I want you to get hungry for for yourself and God wants you to. That's why I'm not going to do that. I'm going to obey the spirit of the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord told me, say, he set a fire on you. He set you where you want to desire to continue to see what the rest of that word was. Now you go in there and you read it and you get a hunger and you get excited about what God is doing in your life. And I want to thank you all for watching these podcasts. I thank you all. Uh, I want to thank you all individually. And I want to thank you all for sharing and, you know, helping the word of God spread throughout the nation. And uh, I always like to end with a phrase, and that is, I like to close by saying, you all know, please like, subscribe, share. Thank you all for your support. You must do the things you think you cannot do. Amen. You got to do the stuff that you think you can't do. And remember, when you're judging others, it leaves no room for you to love them. And until next time, I love you all. God bless you. Another message from Worldwide Kingdom Ministry. We'd like to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, God bless and peace.